Hey Trinity community, it's Pastor Hemingway here. I want to thank you for joining me today for this devotion. Our Bible verse is from the Gospel of St. John, the first chapter, verses 10 through 13. And it says, He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So who are you? Without sounding like the band The Who, it's such an important question. And we're all asked that question. And when we are, we usually have our standard answers, right? I say things like, I'm a husband to Karen, I'm the dad of Matt and Jack and Sophie, I'm the son of Bill and Sue, I'm the brother of Mark, I'm a pastor at Trinity. All those things are true, and it's a blessing to have those identities. But when I'm really asked that question, who am I, my most important identity is found in the fact that I am a child of God. Through faith in Jesus Christ, I have my most important identity. And it's an identity that is the most valuable gift I've ever received. I love what it says in Acts 17, where it says, In Him we live and move and have our being. So as believers in Christ, our very existence is identified by our relationship to Him. And that relationship is strengthened by the way that we live our lives, and by the way that we use the gifts that God has given us. Because the more we use his blessings, the closer we get to him. The better we understand his will. The deeper our appreciation for him grows, and the better we get at living life his way. If you want to put this into a sports analogy, how we practice using the gifts our God has given us will determine how we play the game. In other words, it will affect our relationship with him. So it's important for us to practice our faith using the tools that he has given us to cultivate our being in him. I want you to watch this video from Pastor Zach who wrote the Red Letter Challenge. And I want you to listen to what he says about this important aspect of the Christian faith. So in this 40-day challenge, Jesus is going to ask us to do a lot of things, and we're going to be excited to do them. He's going to ask us to receive his forgiveness and to give that forgiveness away to others. We're going to be serving our neighbors and our communities. We're going to be generous towards those around us, and we're going to go and be his witnesses in the world. So we got a lot to do, but before we do any of that, we need to understand something first. It's very important that you understand this, is that what we do flows out of our being with Christ. You see, before Jesus ever asks us to do anything, he invites us into a relationship with him. And that time we spend in relationship with him is really important because that impacts what we do for him. There's a lot of people that are followers of Jesus that get frustrated with themselves. And and you might say something like, man, I wish I was more loving or I wish I was more kind or more generous. And, and people think they have a doing problem. And so when they say that, it's almost like I'm going to grit my teeth together. I'm going to be more loving and I'm going to forgive more. But Jesus doesn't ask us to grit our teeth together and pull us up on our bootstraps and, and try harder. What he asks us is to be with him. Many of us don't have a doing problem. We have a being problem. So today I'm out on a golf course and I believe golf's going to teach us a lot about what it means to be with Christ. So I'm going to play, I got a par four here, I got a good round going and I'm going to play it in and you're going to see just how good of a golfer I am which is a little bit scary for me. Oh baby. That's beautiful. So golf is my favorite sport in the world to play, but it's probably the most frustrating sport ever. And what's frustrating to me is I can usually walk into most other sports and almost off the bat be decent, but man, I've tried to be great at golf for more than 20 years and I couldn't figure out why I can't get over the hump until my kids started playing golf this summer. You see, there was a golf course that had free clinics 
all summer long and it was the first summer my kids started playing. They're nine and six and so it was really fun getting to see them learn the game. And, and so at this clinic on Sundays there would be free practice, so it was stations. And so if you know golf, you'd hit your drivers and you'd hit your irons and you'd spend time in the sand and working on your sand game and you'd chipping and putting and all the all of it. And then on Wednesdays and Thursdays they'd actually let the kids play the course. And my kids didn't actually like Sundays, but they loved going to play the course. And I'm wired the same way. I never wanted to practice. I just wanted to get out on the course and play and I thought that'll be my practice out there. But what happens is yeah, I can have some good shots here and there, but my game is wildly inconsistent because I didn't spend enough time practicing like I should have. So Gary Player, one of golf's all-time greats, once said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. And we know, of course, the more we practice the things, just the better we get. And so if I really want to be great at golf, I need to spend time practicing. I need to be on the driving range. I need to be putting on the, on the green. I need to be chipping uh, around the green and, and the sand with the bunker shots. I just have to do those things if I want to be great. And the reality is, I truly believe the more I practice at this game, the, the more enjoyable the game will actually be on the course. And I think the same is true when it comes to us and our relationship with God, and especially in this Red Letter Challenge, that the more we spend time with Christ and be with Him, the more enjoyable the things we do for Him will be. And, and Jesus talks to His disciples, much like golf, how there's many facets of the game. Jesus gives His disciples many different ways in which we can be with Him, in which we can connect with Him. And we call these things spiritual disciplines. So Jesus talks a lot about these disciplines and he tells us different ways that we can connect with him and be with him. And so in this first full week of the Red Letter Challenge, days 6 through 12, we're going to see that Jesus asks his followers to abide in his word. And so we're going to spend time in God's word and the Holy Bible and learn more about who he is and the story of what he's done for us. And he tells his disciples to pray earnestly. And so we're going to learn that prayer can be a conversation between us and God and it can actually refresh us. We're going to talk about resting in Him and what it means to fast and what it means to take a Sabbath. And all of these principles, all of these things are disciplines for us to connect greater with the God that made us. And so I'm going to try to make my 30-foot birdie putt here and let's just see what happens. You see, really being the best follower of Jesus that we want to be is a combination of both being and doing. And after all that Jesus has done for me, I want to represent him well. I want to do the best that I can. And so that's why this Red Letter Challenge exists. And what I want to tell you is you can't be a great disciple of Jesus without knowing who he is and without spending time with him. And I think the spiritual disciplines for us are the same way. We can go out and try to do great things for Christ, and we probably will. But if we don't have that foundation and that relationship with Jesus, we'll, we'll quickly burn out. And I think the spiritual disciplines are those things that give us the fuel and give us the energy to do what Christ asks. So when, he, when we spend time in His Word, we learn more about what Jesus has done and how amazing He is. And, and when I spend time praying with Him, I experience this peace from God that passes all human understanding. And when I rest in Him and when I fast from things in this world, man, I'm reminded that God is my provider. When, when I do all of these things, I'm fueled up and I have the energy to actually do what Jesus calls us to do. And so I really hope you spend some really great time being with Jesus this week, learning who he is, experiencing what he's done for you. And I truly believe that'll change you.